Well, hello, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy with our official 13th episode of Flat Earth Can't Science. You know, I've spent my life helping other people. So today, when somebody got in my comments and suggested I help this poor soul out, I just had to do it. While I've never heard of Owen Benjamin, I understand he's undergoing a great personal struggle right now. Apparently, he's got a debate coming up with Mr. Verbal Cut and Paste himself, Eric Dubay. And if he cannot successfully defend the globe, he's going to descend into the darkness of flat earth. Well, fear not, Owen. Help is on the way. I want to talk more flat earth. This is the thing I want to ask the round earth people to explain to me. If the earth is spinning at 700 miles an hour, 1100 miles an hour, whatever, why isn't the air spinning? And before you answer real fast and say, oh, it's all relative, it's all the same shit, the higher you go in the air, the less atmosphere there is until there's almost no atmosphere. Like 40,000 feet up, there's almost no atmosphere. So where is the break where you get away from the atmosphere in, in, in which it's no longer relative? Well, Owen, and I, I hope it's okay I call you Owen. Owen, the atmosphere is 62 miles thick, or 100 kilometers. And it's not a closed system like a balloon or an oxygen tank. It's got what's called a pressure gradient. That means that the air has the highest pressure down by the surface, and then the higher you get, the pressure drops until it gets to the point that it's a vacuum when it's next to the vacuum of space. Now, like I said, that's 62 miles up. Now, airliners fly about seven miles above the ground, and military and private jets fly maybe another two miles on top of that. So you still have an awful lot of atmosphere above you. And all that atmosphere goes with the rotation of the Earth, so you won't see the ground moving below you. So, if the Earth is spinning 1,100 miles an hour, and the atmosphere somehow miraculously is attached to the Earth, is that, is that what kind of friction is that? Sliding friction is when the, the molecules are touching, so sliding friction is moving it along, right? Fine. When you go up enough, there's no more atmosphere. So you are now just, like if you're in a hot air balloon that goes up 30,000 miles, there's no atmosphere. So if you, why isn't the earth flying by? Okay, Owen, I, I'm sure that you misspoke when you suggested that a balloon could go 30,000 miles off the surface of the earth. Yes, they could probably get up to 30,000 feet and some specially designed ones like the Red Bull Stratos balloon got up to 128,000 feet, but that's far beyond the range of most balloons. Now, I'm sure you understand that when we're on the ground here on Earth, we have 62 miles of air above us. That's an awful lot of mass of air, and that mass is pulled towards the center of the Earth by gravity. Now, due to the effects of gravity, we have this gradient and pressure in our atmosphere. So although friction does have a small role in all of this, the main thing that holds the atmosphere above a certain spot on Earth as it rotates is the force of gravity. I would love to stay a globe Earth person because being a flat Earth person is another level of um, ostracism that I really don't want at all. Well, good news, Owen. You don't have to become a flat Earth person you can choose to accept reality. Now, I'm going to help you with some tools here. The first one is, on a globe Earth, the horizon is below your level when you're up at elevation. And as you can see here, the horizon on our Earth is clearly below our level. Now, the people in the Flat Earth movement love to say that the horizon rises to eye level. As you can see with this level right here, that's not what happens on Earth. So there's your first piece of evidence that the Earth is a sphere. Fucking explain to me 
Why, when you leave the Earth's atmosphere, does the Earth not, at that point, appear to be going 1,100 miles an hour underneath you? Great question, Owen. You would think that that would be the case if you just gently floated straight up in a balloon. Yes, the Earth would be rotating under your feet once you left the atmosphere of the Earth. However, you can't float up that high in a balloon. The only way you can get up there is to go into Earth orbit. And to do that, you need to be on a rocket. And you need to be going really, really fast. Here, have a look. Here's another one. Why do flights not go around the poles? You know, and that's a great question, and a lot of people ask it. The reason is, is that the shortest distance between any two points on Earth is what's called a great circle route. And this only works on a globe. And since it is the actual shortest distance between any two points on Earth, that means that the Earth is a globe. Now, as far as going over the North Pole, we do that all the time, generally between North America, Russia, and, and Europe, for example. However, there are not many great circle routes that take us anywhere we want over the South Pole. Now, I'm sure the military has some business that takes them down there once in a while, but civilian airliners are in the business to make money. And if the shortest route does not go over the South Pole, they're not going to make a detour just to do it. Now, one exception to that was Pan Am Flight number 50. This was on the 50th anniversary of the founding of Pan Am in 1977, and they had a chartered 747 that circumnavigated the world going over the North and the South Pole. Now, you can look this up yourself, but here is actually one of their brochures from the trip back in 1977. Check out those prices, man. Please explain this to me because I do not like where the logic is taking any of this. It's not fun. It's actually incredibly isolating and I don't want it at all. The last thing I need in my life is to be given another label that makes me look insane. Well, Owen, you're right. That's a conundrum. However, you have free will to decide whether or not you want to give yourself that label. Personally, if I was you, I wouldn't. And here's another bit of evidence that'll help you out. This is sunset last night over Northern Lake, Michigan from the UP of Michigan. Now there's a couple of things on here that confirm to you that the Earth is a rotating spherical planet. Now, if you look at the sun right here, you'll see it's very low on the horizon. Sunset, spherical Earth, rotation the sun is lighting up the bottom side of the clouds. Now another thing that was really cool about this sunset is you see that vertical column of light coming off the sun? That's not lens flare. That's what it actually looked like last night. That was going from the setting sun up to the clouds. And that can only happen on a spherical Earth. So there's a third piece of evidence for your debate. 3,552 people wouldn't be watching me after two hours and 11 minutes of me just talking. Dumb people don't, don't retain that amount of people. They don't understand why they think the earth is round, is my bottom line. They don't. Then explain to me how you can go above the atmosphere and you do not see a spinning Earth. Explain to me how NASA shows us images of the Earth that are photoshopped. The clouds are duplicates of the other clouds in the thing. Coriolis effect proves the Earth isn't flat. I, I believe that as well. Uh, I'm pr I, I really hope we have more than the Coriolis effect. Well, Owen, we got a couple of questions here. The first one you brought up was a very good question, and that was the photoshopped clouds. Now, satellites are actually relatively close to the surface of the Earth when they are in orbit. For example, if the Earth was the size of a basketball, satellites would be less than one inch above the surface of the basketball. So they take pictures of the Earth in strips, and then those strips are all stitched together. 
and then they clean them up a little bit, uh, blend in some of the lines, maybe put a cloud or two in. So yeah, you're going to see some of those things because they make it just visually a little bit more appealing. So yes, the images are processed a little bit, just like the cover of a magazine, a photograph of a beautiful model is processed a little bit to make her a little bit more beautiful. But that does not mean in any way, shape, or form that those photographs are fake. Now the second part of your question is actually pretty interesting. Yes, the Coriolis effect does confirm that the Earth rotates. However, that's not the only evidence that we have. We have gyroscopes that can measure the rotations. We uh, have sunrises and sunsets and the pattern of lights on mountains. We can measure curvature. Seismic waves and the patterns they make after earthquake confirm that the Earth is spherical. We have star trails. We have different weights based on latitude. As we've already mentioned, great circle courses are the shortest distances from between any two points on Earth. We have eclipses. Now, individually, each one of these items confirms uh, rotation or a spherical Earth or both. However, in combination, the evidence is simply overwhelming that the Earth is a sphere that rotates and orbits the sun. If the Earth is flat, I may tap out of YouTube for a while, but I am not enjoying the path that this is taking me on because the arguments for the Earth being round are not very strong at all. And this is something I would never, ever, ever, ever question, ever. I'm having a, I'm not comfortable with any of this and uh, I'm not on board with the flat Earth thing at all. I'm just uh, finding the arguments for round Earth to be, because I'm preparing to debate this Eric Dubai guy, Dubai. And so I want my arguments concrete. Oh, and telescope. So all the planets and moons we see through a telescope are round. So Earth is the only planet in our solar system is flat, really. Okay, imagine they're all flat disks, right? Do we see spheres in the sky? You can't prove it. That Actually, yeah, we can, Owen. Uh, all you need is a tennis ball and a light source. You simply cannot make a disk form these shapes. This only occurs on a sphere. But just playing devil's advocate, we could say that they're all disks. However, in order for that to work, every single disk would have to appear at the same orientation, specifically perpendicular to our line of sight. Now, the chances of everything being perfect to all observers on Earth is statistically impossible. To prove 1,100 miles per hour, but it still takes 24 hours to make one rotation. Well, I don't know. I haven't done the math on that. Southern Hemisphere constellations are different than Northern. How can it be flat if what we see in the sky and the direction they move are different? Love you. I still believe the Earth is round, so I, I'm sure that's a great argument. Can we please have... Oh, and these are star trails from the celestial equator. As you can see, the Northern and Southern poles have counter-rotating stars. I, I, I really, really don't want to believe the Earth is flat, guys. You think I'm ostracized now? Fine, there is. Can we please not do that to me? Can someone just please give me some some ammo here? Well, Owen, you know, this has been a relatively short video, but, you know, look at all of these reasons right here. You know, I'm thinking that maybe 20 minutes with Google could give you this many more. All you have to do is want to see it and sit down and work with it and try and understand it. Subscribe hugepianist.com for my specials. PayPal.me slash feed the bear if you want to feed that bear. Patreon.com slash WDTL. But if the earth is flat, money won't matter because uh, I will be uh, alone in a little room. Well, Owen, that was quite the turnaround. You started getting a little twinkle in your eye and a little lilt in your voice when you started asking for those PayPals and Patreon subscriptions. Between the stuff we talked about here and your background in basic physics, I don't think you'll have much problem with Eric. You know, Owen, I want to applaud you for being so open with this struggle that you're having. All these YouTube videos are bringing such attention to you 
and to the flat earth movement, we were pretty concerned that it was going away, but I think this may have been the shot in the arm that it really needs. You know, on the bright side, I had never heard of you until you started putting all these YouTube videos out and, and tying it to the flat earth movement. So I'd have to say that the publicity certainly is a win-win for both of you. It's almost as if you work together to plan this out. Well, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you for your attention, and please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. This rabbit hole's too deep for me.